Good evening and welcome to Mr. Mendo, The Lost Reviews. I'm the Cinema Slob. Joey Tedesco has been fired. Michael A. Mendo Novelli. Internet reviewer. Soldier. Michael Sarah Hayter. The world tonight is grieving over the loss of Mr. Mendo's computer after being carried halfway across the globe into battle-scarred, war-torn hellholes. His laptop has finally given out on him. This laptop, of course, was famous for providing exceptionally shitty audio quality, such as this. Or perhaps he's wondering why someone was such a man that to file or refuse that order in favor of yours. It's right on the box of the record, fella. Luckily, this does not have to mean the end of Mr. Mendo's show. Just go to this website and learn what you can do to help. And remember, we've got all kinds of special perks for those who donate. Ah, oh, sweet! My autographed copy of King of Radis by Michael A. Novelli finally arrived! Man, I've been waiting for this thing for ages! <sighs> Perfect! To fill the void until Mr. Mendo can buy a new computer, we've unearthed something very, very special. It's a never-before-seen review, recorded two years ago in Afghanistan, on the eve of a bloody uprising. I assume. I mean, it's Afghanistan. Bloody uprisings happen every week, right? Mendo dealt with this crisis the only way he knew how, by filming a review of the Sui Hark masterpiece Double Team, starring Jean-Claude Van Damme and athlete-turned-actor Wunderkind Dennis Rodman. Tonight, you will see footage you have never seen before. Unfortunately, despite the awesome technology we have at our disposal here at the Agony Booth... When my hands get tired, I tap with my gun! <laughs> We were unable to improve upon the severely flawed audio and video quality in this review. However, we still believe it's worth presenting this amazing gem. So I give you now, for the first time ever in recorded history, Mr. Mendo's review of Double Team. Aloha, welcome to the latest star-studded episode of Mr. Mendo's Hack Attack. I am, of course, your fan tap with us, Mr. Mendo, and today we celebrate two things. One, the 10th anniversary of my ongoing boycott against Mountain Dew, and the cementing of alliances between our website and others like it. And just like today's subject, we're comically mismatched. Double Team, starring Jean-Claude Van Damme, and for some ungodly reason, Dennis Rodman, is, in my opinion, the high-water mark of Euro-trash action cheese. The last desperate gasp of the idea that Fellini and Explosions belonged in the same script. And that a firm grasp of English and or training as an actor were unnecessary, as long as you were able to squint really hard or wear what was, presumably, fashionable clothing at uh, one point. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to honor Dennis Rodman. Not for his acting ability or willingness to turn himself to a freak of nature in a desperate bid to draw attention away from Michael Jordan, but because he represents a proud tradition of professional athletes being convinced by their flunkies that they should be in moon pitches, and then proceeding to pick scripts that anyone with a lick of sense would turn down. For more on this, please welcome my best pal and yours, The Cinema Slub. Yes, it's, it's really quite amazing that Mendo was able to mention me two years before my own show. That's how much of a forward-looking genius he was. Ah, oh, we're going to miss those spooky psychic powers. God rest his soul. Hold it, hold it. Yeah, you're doing it all wrong. Mendo wanted a cameo for somebody to talk about athletes turned into actors. Get with the program. Now, if you look at this expensive graphic I put together, you'll see the high water mark is The Rock in the Rundown, followed closely by O.J. Simpson in the Naked Gun movies. Dennis Rodman doesn't come close to reaching the heights in Double Team, of course, but I think we can safely agree that he does much, much, much better than Shaquille O'Neal and Kazam. Or Steel. Or, as a matter of fact, any goddamn movie made by Shaquille O'Neal. I'd say he score at least a Brian Bosworth in the Stone Cold on the Jocks Actor Meter. You see, that wasn't too hard, now was it? Now can I please have my show back? No! Sorry to interrupt, Love. but you're upstaging me. Quinn, Jack, your final assignment is classification red. At 3.05 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, a truck loaded with 32 kilograms of non-active plutonium was stolen from a secured U.S. nuclear installation outside Croatia. Ah, uh, writing words to look like they were done on a label maker. Why did we ever think that was cool? Quinn's in. We have satellite confirmation that the XRT is mobile. Wow, this'll be a ride. Quinn has 14 hours to reach the border. If he does make it, his resignation is final. But first, we'd like to play a little hit by a band out of Germany you might know as Nina. I'm Casey Kasem.
Hey, this isn't my $18 million military vehicle. It's a La Rubia. Oh, it's okay. Just leave that stolen plutonium in the hands of the terrorists. I'm sure they'll bring it right back. Bullshit. We put in I know who killed me by mistake! Run! Catherine! Your damn cow is in my way! Why is my Englishness you not to be understanding? But despite being completely contented with retired life, his old boss comes back with a pretty please and presumably some sugar on top, and suddenly he's back in the game. You don't get it. For me it's personal. For you. It's politics. Come on. Politics makes money. Brings you opportunities. Everything's politics. You want personal? I'll give you personal. Stavros is back. And we want him alive. Because if he's not there to kill Arthur in Book 5, that tweaky bat thing from Book 3 will never stop reincarnating. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference for the win! Move the seat up. It's a little tight in the rear. That's generally true of the CIA, isn't it? Wait a minute. That can't be Mickey Rourke. His voice sounds... normal. You got Quinn back in the game. That'll be challenging. Pull over here. And by the way, I left you a present. Oh! Get me out of here! Ah! Jean-Claude Van Damme heads to Antwerp to meet Dennis Robbins' character, whose name is Yaz. I say that sounds stupid, but I actually know a guy named Yaz. Cool story, bro! I'm looking for Yaz. Ew! The 90s were horrible. Linkara does whatever the fuck he's gonna do. The attention to detail of this review is just... Oh, inspiring. Who are you? I'm the man. You? I hope you don't judge a person by the way they look. I hate that. Who does your hair? Siegfried or Roy? A joke that's funny with any accent. Whoa. It's not this workshop. Who's that? Rudolph? I may not have ringed you, but I do have the best elves in the business. Christmas shopping for bad boys? Huh? I don't play with the bad boys anymore. Only the good guys, baby. Just tell me what you need. I got shit here so new, even I don't know I have it. Nice gun. Mine's real. Offense gets the glory. But defense wins the game. Setting aside that lame pun, where the hell did that come from? Uh, excuse me, Mr. 2010 Mendo. Now, you do realize that the reason everything Dennis Rodman says is a lame basketball pun is because he's Dennis Rodman, right? Now, I may live in Canada, and the only sports we get on TV are hockey and moose wrestling, but even I know about Dennis Rodman, eh? You know, the crazy hair, uh, led the NBA rebounds for seven seasons, married four times, including the time he married himself. I mean, were you really sitting through this whole movie wondering why an arms dealer was constantly speaking in basketball metaphors? He's up! He's in! I'll have to call it a five-pointer. Oops, airball. Man, come on! When was there ever an athlete who was more playing himself? Listen, kid. I've been hearing that crap ever since I was at UCLA. I'm out there busting my buns every night. Tell your old man to drag Walton in the near up and down the court for 48 minutes. Um, nope. Even he is not more obviously playing himself than Dennis Rodman right now. God, why do pretentious European movies always have carnivals? They line up Starburst in their sights, but a... Tiger... Tips them off and everything goes pear shapes, getting Quinn's entire team and Starburst's family killed. <laughs> Oh, 
Ooh, product placement! I can do that too! It beckons to you. It calls out for you in the night. Now that's for Koopin! Quinn nearly gets killed trying to save a baby, only to get shunted off to the island to spend his day surfing the internet with a bunch of other supposedly dead spies. It's an interesting premise, but the next half hour or so contributes jack shit to the plot, so we're gonna skip ahead a little. He escapes the island, hooks back up with the Az, and this happens. Good luck! Thanks! Let's try something else! That's love, baby! Hey, watch your head! Now that's what I call hang time! What the... Did this movie just really put Dennis Rodman inside a giant basketball? That'd be like if they got Tanya Harding and had her skim across a glacier in a giant ice skate! Tanya Harding would have totally done that, by the way. In fact, I'm pretty sure she'd still be up for it. Thought I got rid of you. Anyway, after several scenes of violence that really don't make any sense, Quinn sends an email to... somebody, and meets up with a group of super secret agent monks. These monks have been collecting information on Rome for 500 years. The system has been really updated. Cyber monks. Then this happens. I hate practice, but I never miss twice, brother. They rescue his wife and son, defeat the bad guy largely through the screenwriter having no idea how landmines work, and also there's a tiger. What do you think, Berdrick? I agree. Dennis Robin's not a terrible actor, but his character's just a prop. He makes puns and fights sometimes. He's like itchy and scratchy. Well, I think we can all agree that this movie's a waste of time. Not just for us, but for the people who made it. What do you think? Love. Whoa, 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 wait. That's all we're gonna be saying about this thing? This is the whole review? I mean, what about the whole section in the movie that took place on the island? Doesn't anybody notice it was a total knockoff of The Prisoner? You know, the show with Patrick McGuhan, where a bunch of former spies are held captured in a village. And every time they try to escape, a high-tech defense system stops them. Okay, well, maybe not that high-tech. Instead of the village, we get the colony, and instead of a balloon thing, it's lasers. But other than that, it's the same concept. And don't get me started on the parts in Rome. Dennis Rodman wants to blend in, so he dresses like the orange Power Ranger. Really? And drives around in a stolen car with his head sticking out of the sunroof? And what about the scene in the public square where Van Damme disguises himself as Chris Cornell circa 1997 for no reason whatsoever? And what's with the guy on the horse who suddenly starts murdering everybody in sight? Who was he? One of the bad guys? Or just some random guy going postal? I don't know! And seriously, are we not talking about the final fight, which has Van Damme kicking a tiger in the goddamn face? Or the way it ends with the Colosseum getting blown up? You know, the Colosseum, the one built thousands of years ago. Cause just between you and me, that's kind of a big deal. Also, mental note to self, when a bomb goes off, hide behind the nearest soda vending machine. Because, apparently, those things are built to withstand 1000 degree temperatures. Oh, and you know that bad guy in the movie? Not even a bad guy. I mean, what is with the CIA even going after him in the first place? Okay, fine, he does kidnap Van Damme's pregnant wife. But that's only after they kill his son. And he gives her excellent parental care. If the CIA killed my son, I'd be blowing shit up too. I swear, you could totally do a fan edit of this movie where Mickey works the good guy. So, none of this is worth mentioning. I got fired from Mr. Mendo's Lost Reviews for this. Freaking amateurs. Hi, Mr. Mendo. This has been Mr. Mendo's Hack Attack, and... Well, actually, I really shouldn't try to do any kind of QC outro. No. It's really more of a gimmick, isn't it? Yeah, I thought so. Glad I have you around. You are the angel upon my shoulder. Sadly, that is where the video ends. Our experts believe that Mendo was talking to an actual angel, who immediately summoned him home. He's in a much better place now. Northern Virginia. I'm the Cinema Slob, and I will not be seeing you next time on Mr. Mendo's Hack Attack. A savage and a soldier as a century he did stand He saluted a fair maiden by a waving of his hand And then he boldly kissed her and he passed it off as a joke He drilled her up in a century box, struck up in a soldier's cloak and a You know, the show with Patrick McGowan You know, the show with Patrick McGuhan 
You know, the show with Patrick McGuhan. When my hands get tired, I tap with my gun. <laughs> Why did I use real vodka? <laughs> God. <coughs> oh. oh boy. I guess I want it to be authentic. Yeah, that tastes authentic, alright. <sighs> <sighs>